Temperature detected is normal. There's a lot of patients that unfortunately come here after they've been punted around to their primary doctors or cardiologists or pulmonologists. And they'll say that all my doctors tell me I'm okay, I'm fine, yet I don't feel fine. I can't go back to work. I can't go back to school. I can't go back to my daily activities. Patients are frustrated. They don't know where to turn for additional help. And that's really the patients that we have the most benefit for. My name is Dr. Thomas Gutt. I'm the medical director for the post-COVID recovery program here at Staten Island University Hospital. Post-COVID recovery program here is defined as the symptoms, the constellation of symptoms that a patient will go through after they've survived the main COVID infection itself. Typically, we're talking about, say, about 30 or 35% of patients having some lingering symptoms after the infection passes that entails fatigue or neurocognitive issues, loss of sense of smell, difficulties with shortness of breath. So it's a, multiple symptoms that can kind of play into this long COVID syndrome. What we're finding is a lot of patients are experiencing brain fog. So they're talking about not being able to think as clearly, word finding problems, memory problems. So we're screening patients and offering actually some free testing of cognitive deficits or cognitive screening to see if patients are having any of these difficulties. This Staten Island COVID recovery program was one of the very first centers to open up in the United States. First started in November 2020 and has been treating long COVID ever since. Originally, Dr. Gutt says patients traveled anywhere from Westchester to South Jersey. Now, the program has expanded to include patients nationwide. Generally speaking, as a, as a trend I observed here, the patients that have been fully vaccinated and have their booster are generally not patients of ours, or at least not patients of ours for very long. Predominantly, the overwhelming majority of patients that we see here are that 20% or so that have not had a vaccine. The ones that are a bit more surprising, and I guess the ones that are more prevalent in what we see here, tend to be the ones that were middle-aged, maybe not that sick chronically, maybe a little bit, a bit of diabetes issues, a little bit overweight, a little bit of high blood pressure, um, and generally did pretty well with the beginning stages of COVID. They had the infection, they had the fevers, they had the cough, and then it got better, slightly. But then afterwards, they come back to us with these kind of weird and bizarre complaints that they never really recovered from, far beyond the fevers and the acute infection itself. This team isn't the only one here in New York looking for answers. Researchers at the Feinstein Institutes at Northwell Health and Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in Long Island hope their study can provide clues to better treat this infection. This team looked at a popular heartburn medication to mitigate COVID-19 symptoms. The study was for patients with COVID, patients who were sick at home with COVID. They weren't so sick that they had to be admitted to the hospital. It was a randomized placebo-controlled study, which means 55 patients were enrolled. About half of them took the drug and half of them got a, a dummy medication or a placebo. The drug is called famotidine, which is the active ingredient in many heartburn medications. And the question was, if you take famotidine, when you find out you have COVID, is the duration of the disease, that is that shortened? And number two, is there evidence in the bloodstream that your immune response, your inflammatory response to the disease is affected? And the answer to both of those was yes. Hi, today we're gonna to start our trial. We received our kit. Inside the kit has a folder with lots of information in it. Everything very self-explanatory along with a scale, an iPad that will show all of the vitals that you'll be taking once a day, along with some other equipment that was given, and medication. The medication will be taken three times a day. My symptoms and everybody's symptoms were pretty mild. My husband, who also did the trial with me, he had a little bit more of symptoms than the rest of us. Definitely loss of smell and taste, headaches, some general symptoms is what I had. Jennifer and her husband were both sick with COVID at the same time, and each participated in the trial given different sets of pills. My smell and my taste 
lasted a lot longer than he did. His symptoms kind of resolved themselves fairly quickly and he did gain smell and taste back quicker. By joining the study as a patient, Jennifer hopes this encourages others to follow suit. I just feel like I helped science a little bit by, by doing this. And the more that we can find out, the better off we all are as a society. I mean, realistically, I think that if people have the opportunity to join these trials, especially with this, this virus being so new to everybody, every bit of information that we can find out is useful information. Up next, hear the amazing stories of survival, as told by long COVID patients themselves, still battling symptoms post-infection. For NBC New York, I'm Linda Gaudino.